everybody, welcome back to the Houston Texans Madden 21 Franchise Rebuild. It's time for another offseason. Coming off of our division title winning 8-8 eight eight campaign. It was our first full year here in the series. We got to learn about this team and see what we do well, what we don't. This is a really inconsistent team on the field. And that's because the roster is built with... A lot of stars and then a lot of players that we're still looking for replacements for. Our interior of the offensive line is not great. We have some good receivers who literally are both best at the same exact thing. And then defensively, they tried to just hope that having JJ Watt would be enough and have a couple more key players, but you got to have a good all-around defense, especially if you want to compete against some of the top teams in the NFL right now. So we've got to add talent on both sides of the football, and we're going to get into the offseason here right now. Should be a lot of fun. We already went through regression last episode, but to refresh your memory and my own, Darren Fells lost 32 points. He is a 36-year-old tight end. Overall, what I take away from regression is uh, not a lot. I mean, Bradley Roby is still a key player. Brandon Cooks, J.J. Watt, now a free agent. Randall Cobb down 20 points. That contract of his isn't looking all that great for us. Will Fuller only down 2. Terod Taylor down 16. Maybe we're looking for a new backup quarterback this offseason. But overall, nothing here really changes my plan for the offseason. We currently have $45 million in cap space, and we have some contracts that I may want to get out of that could give us a little more relief. If we release Randall Cobb, we'll free $8.2 million in cap space, and you might be saying, just trade him, see what you can get. When it comes to situations like this, the sim player in me just says, I can't do that. Nobody would trade for that contract unless it was a Brock Osweiler situation where you're giving them a pick to take on the contract. I'm sorry, that's not going to happen. We will be releasing Randall Cobb and freeing up a net of like six and a quarter million dollars. Another player we could look to release is center Nick Martin. I don't think I will right now. I'll just see what the situation looks like later. He's the 24th ranked center in the league. So on paper right there, that tells you a lot of teams can't do better. There isn't like an 80 overall center for every team out there. And that's why you see massive contracts given to average to sometimes below average offensive linemen. You have to, or you're going to be left with somebody that's even worse than them. So after opening up some space, here's what we have to figure out. Who are we going to have on the team going into next year? J.J. Watt's demand is down a bit. This is why you usually wait for veterans when it comes to contracts that are over 30. Because as soon as they regress, the offer comes down. Now you only get one chance. That's the risk you take here. So to be safe, you'd go two years, 45, and that would save you compared to a two-year, $55 million contract, or a two-year, 50, I think, was his uh, fair offer earlier. If we do that, we're left with 24 million. And just, that doesn't seem like enough to do what we need, depending on how much we can depend on with the draft. Now, Will Fuller, he's due a big deal, 28-year-old wide receiver. There's Justin Reed. It feels like this is a deal we might not be able to make work. Trevarius Ward, we signed him a year ago. Kiki QT, solid wide receiver. David Johnson, I know I'm not looking to bring him back right now, especially after the breakout of Jeremiah Bradham. So running back is a position we want to be very cheap with. Jordan Aikens, already 30 years old. PJ Hall, after last season, I mean... I'd say he's earned this contract, but can we give it to him? Probably let Darren Fells go after the regression. Quincy Etienne. This is where they just need to make it so undrafted free agents get their own section of the offseason. And you get to sign them to three-year deals. Because one year and then going to a different team, that really doesn't happen. 
they would be an exclusive rights free agent here and they literally couldn't negotiate with anybody else unless they were cut. That's a step before restricted free agency, which usually happens to players who were undrafted, played three years, and then have their year up. They're restricted, so you'd have to give a pick, you'd have to sign an offer sheet, they'd be tendered. This would be an exclusive right situation. As always, I like to make the easier decisions first and just start to narrow down the player pool here. This one's tricky because I wouldn't mind keeping around either a Geophore or Martin, but if you're going to sign a 71 or 70 overall player, you might as well take a look at free agency first. And that's what we're going to do. I'm going to come back to both Quincy Etienne and Kenny Robinson later. Sometimes players are low rated enough to where they'll take deals like this that are significantly below the fair offer. Let's make it a two-year offer here to ETN, and he won't take it because he's a 70. We do get a deal done with Kenny Robinson. I sign him rather than wait because I already know that his skill set's where I like it for a 67 overall player, and it was for one year, $1.2 million, compared to these multi-year contracts where I'm a bit more selective. We'll let Aikens test. We'll let Keon Crossin test as well. Wouldn't mind bringing him back. I don't think I'll keep Kiki QT. I'm looking at adding more physical wide receivers and probably not just one because what if he gets hurt? I think we have to add at least a player with starting potential and a player with projectable potential down the road. Let's see, this is the minimum for JJ Harris. Two years, done deal there. We will let Dontavius Russell test, and that leaves us then with J.J. Watt, Will Fuller, Justin Reed, Charvarius Ward. These are all the tough decisions, and P.J. Hall. And what kind of feels right at the moment is to almost let everybody go to free agency and then see what we can do from there. I'd like to keep Will Fuller, but it's not a necessity to keep him. For J.J. Watts, I just wonder if this ends up being too much considering the state of the roster and how much $22 million would limit us. We still need to upgrade the interior of the offensive line. We're going to have to think about adding wide receivers. We have a defense where if we have Watts, we still need to look at upgrading things, but if we don't, then we can possibly add more players just not on his level. So it's very tricky right now to pick like what the most important signing is, if there's a right one to make right now. Can't get out of Zach Cunningham's contract if I wanted to, just too much of a penalty right now. Both Cooks and Fuller are 28 year old deep threats. It just doesn't make a lot of sense to have both of them on the team especially if they're both going to be on big contracts. One thing we could do, I know he doesn't want to be traded again, but we could trade Brandon Cooks and sign Will Fuller. And the net result there would be we have a deep threat plus a pick compared to a deep threat and letting Will Fuller go. Or we could tag him and trade him, but I'd rather have Will Fuller than Brandon Cooks. He has higher catching, 96 speed, Cooks, Still very good, 94 speed, 88 catching. I just think Fuller is a bit better, and I'd rather have him if I had the choice. The only issue here is that every year this contract would be spent in regression years, and because he's a star dev player, that could hurt late in the contract. If he were a higher development, regression wouldn't be as much of a factor. We can go to any of these other receivers and see the tag is 19.2. I don't want to mess with the franchise tag this year at wide receiver. Where the tag might make some sense is with Justin Reed. This contract, by the way, fairly reasonable. I mean, it's just a bit over seven a year for a player who will be in his late 20s for most of the contract. This has been pretty interesting to think about here. When I think about what I want to do defensively and what I want to do offensively, 
it starts to come together and now I'm starting to think maybe we should keep Justin Reed I think a safety with his cover skills at just 25 years old that's going to be a very dependable part of the defense for a long time and you get that for less than eight million dollars per season I would like to offer a deal here to Justin Reed I'll raise the signing bonus a bit would like to avoid going to free agency so 39.5 over five years and there's our first big deal here to Justin Reed the free safety we missed him down the stretch and while I think safety is a spot where you can replace talent I don't know if we have another starting safety on the roster Lonnie Johnson is the strong safety so to me this is a really safe signing to make sure we keep a young great safety on the roster even if safety isn't the position I value the most I think that that's how I want to start this offseason and I just got to think if I'm doing anything else right now. I like Charvarius Ward, but I don't think I want to make this deal right now. We have Conley, we have Roby, and I would come back to him in free agency. But I've got to see some other things first. I think the same goes for PJ Hall. You know it's going to be an interesting offseason when I spend more than a few minutes here in this re-sign players stage. If we sign J.J. Watt right now, that leaves us with 15 mil in cap space. I think what we have to do right here is franchise tag J.J. Watt. We just got to get him on a one-year deal. I think we have to make the move here. He's been with the Texans his entire career. But I think that for us to rebuild the team, a trade here is going to be necessary. And I'm not going to be giving a mega deal to Will Fuller right now. I wanted to keep J.J. Watt. I wanted to keep Will Fuller. But this team's financials are awful. And I just can't force these moves to work. Just because I want certain players to build around. You gotta be flexible here. And I'm trying to see if I can get this team out of the issues they are in so JJ Watt I'm looking to trade him I imagine we can get a first round pick or something I'll add him to the trade block but to make really any offers I have to kind of trade him now there's only 14 million in cap space to spend on free agents where there's Devonte Adams are you kidding me Fred Warner Carlton Davis Baker Mayfield Will Fuller to the Packers. That is not... I don't want that to ever happen, even in Madden. If the Packers sign Will Fuller or Curtis Samuel this offseason... Oh, man, I don't want that to happen. Hopefully, they just stick with MVS. He had a pretty good year. Made a lot of plays for them. But I do not want them to add either of those two. All right, so if you want to get a bit more physical at wide receiver... Then... I mean, there are players here who are deep threats, but can probably do a bit more. You have Michael Gallup and Josh Reynolds. If you want a big body go up and get it receiver there, you might have to start going down to either uh, Preston Williams or somebody else. Rashad Perriman. Going to offensive line, Orlando Brown is available, but I think that we're doing okay at tackle. Guard is my main concern, and there are some chances for us to get better. Alex Kappa might be a decent target for us. He has good strength. Most of the core attributes are mid-70s, and he's an average right guard. And I think that with us looking at uh, our offensive line, an average guard would actually be a bit of an upgrade. Right now, we're looking at McCoy continuing to start, but looking for an upgrade over Max Sharping. Now, there are some really good guards in this draft. That's actually where I think some of the best value is. Marquise Pouncey is available. Matt Paradis, you could find a veteran here to upgrade over Nick Martin, get out of that contract potentially. I'd love to have a player like Fred Warner, but there's no way we can even consider that contract right now, especially because they've already invested at middle linebacker. 
Leighton Vander Esch is available. He has teams interested. Somebody like Devondre Campbell on a one-year deal could make some sense because he should have more cover ability than the other linebackers on our roster. So don't count him out. It's always nice being deep at corner. I'm going to give an offer to Charvarius Ward that's lower than the fair offer just to see what happens there. This is two years, 7.1. A tight end definitely makes some sense while we develop Gordon Norwood. So a veteran on a short deal is something I have interest in. Maybe somebody like Zach Ertz. 81 speed, 86 catching, very reliable receiver. I like to put out just a smaller one year offer. Maybe a little bit less than five here, like 4.09. That's low. Okay, I want to sim past this first stage, see if we get any offers for JJ Watt, and see if we make any signings. We do get Charvarius Ward back, so we're going to be deep at cornerback again. That's good news. That was a two-year deal, but nothing else was accepted. No offers right now for Watt, so we kind of have to initiate that. I would prefer to trade him to the NFC. And every team is going to have a lot of interest. I guess most. The Cowboys aren't interested? You're kidding me. Jerry Jones wouldn't want to add J.J. Watt? Alright, I'm going to make an offer that I could see happening. A good team with a late first round pick trying to get over the edge and then maybe a mid round pick. I'm going to make this offer to Washington and it's declined. So perhaps the one. We have to give up something. I think that's actually pretty reasonable if we give up like a sixth round pick in J.J. Watt and get an additional first round pick this year. And that is going to be how we go forward with this rebuild. I'm very curious to see what route the Texans go now in real life. It's looking more and more like Deshaun Watson doesn't want to be there. And I don't know what's going to happen with J.J. Watt. I think that you could see, like, the whole team starting over here pretty soon. It's just, with the cap situation, the pick situation, it is not an easy situation for Houston. That Washington D-line was already incredible, and we just gave them J.J. Watt. Have fun, NFC. All right, looking at our needs in the draft, cornerback isn't really going to be a big need now. We could address it just because the position is so deep and we have to do something with our now two first round picks, pick 20th and 28th. And that's going to allow us to either make two hopeful additions to the team that can start or be part of a package to move up to make a really big difference. I talked about the offensive line. I think that there's a very good chance to come away here with a day one starter. Maybe somebody like Randy Wallace. Early first talent, late second round projected. I would take him at 28 easily. Linebacker was the spot where I really wasn't sure until I got combine grades, a 7.0. And that's with a 4740. Okay. I'm thinking Lionel Watson is a more complete player. I would guess his field general archetype is just a bit below run stopper. Maybe coverage needs some work, but I think that you have a player that compares a lot to Bernardrick McKinney with a higher ceiling potentially based on what I see here. Nick Hoffman though ran a 4-6-1 mid one talent. So it's always nice to have multiple options here when you have a need. You don't want to rely on one player or you're going to be taking that player maybe a bit earlier than you need to. Hoffman has the higher talent. And then there's Nate Burton, early two talent, 44940. So I think all of these linebackers have something that can try to convince you they're the one to draft. There's going to be probably a three to four difference between the highest overall and the lowest in this range, but thankfully the run stoppers are really intriguing in this game. In, in the past, I wasn't scouting them as much. So that'll definitely be good information. 
They all have pretty good 40s here. Jack Rainey, 467. Late one talent. And then we talk about wide receiver Earl Shepard, 437 at 6'4, 223. 21 reps. Oh man, this is like a DK Metcalf combine here. A minus catching traffic, catching, spec catch. He's exactly what the offense needs, but we pick at 20 and 28. I know I was very interested in some of these other receivers. Johnny Beckham ran a 4.55. That's the first thing I'm looking at here. Who has speed to go with the size? 4.54 for Sean Tompkins. I wanted to finish scouting Stacy Claiborne, who ran 4.42 at six foot three. So here's your value. I think that he could definitely be a target. Here's what's happened around the league. Fred Warner got almost 100 million from the Raiders. They couldn't go with the extra half million, apparently. Orlando Brown to the Steelers. Patrick Ricard to the Rams. Dante Jackson to the Jets. So Fuller should still be out there. PJ Hall to the Bears. So that was a situation where I knew I had Kerry Borden already. Probably should have given him an offer. Maybe that was a more important move than signing Charvarius Ward to a similar deal. Because now we're down PJ Hall and Watt. There's still players here. I mean, Ross Blacklock and Charles Amenahu. But if we're talking about getting better against the run, we just got worse. I'm going to give Alex Kappa a one-year deal. Offensive line is still a priority in the draft, but this is a chance for us to make two potential upgrades. I also think that with us not keeping PJ Hall, I do need to look at free agency a bit here. There are a few players we could consider. Justin Jones is only 26 years old though. 84 strength, 79 block shed. Compared to Gerald McCoy, 91 strength, 75 block shed, and then Kawan Short, 88 and 72. On to the next stage now of free agency. And contract accepted by Zach Ertz. It was not a big deal, but now we have a new starting tight end for this year. We can play Gordon Norwood as well, but here is the veteran Zach Ertz. Here on a one-year contract, and it was only for, I think, like, yeah, $4.6 million. I had to raise the signing bonus a little bit. It was only like a 47-point contract, so I wasn't sure that would work. Looks like here we have a choice on a fifth-year option. I have no idea who it is either. So, Titus Howard. Ooh. I don't know. I wish I could say, give me a minute. A fifth year option on Titus Howard. I think I'm going to pick it up. I like to have him for the extra season. I wonder what that's going to do for the contract number. I wish it would uh, tell me right there. But I don't think it'll be massive. Let's see what it has here. 12.9. Okay, that is massive. 12.9. Yeah, I could have probably done better just signing him after next year. I wasn't sure how big the number would be. So that'll hurt the cap a bit next season. We can always release him though. I'm pretty sure that's a non-guaranteed deal. I think that's very cuttable. Yeah, the way fifth year options work in real life is different than Madden, obviously, but in real life, they become guaranteed on like the first day of the league year for that uh, fifth year. So if I want to release him even now, the penalty is not that bad. So I'll probably release him after next season and then look to make a different deal. I wish they give you all the information there, like, here's the fifth year option, it's worth this much, do you want to pick it up? Alright, the Buccaneers want Alex Kappa pretty badly to return, so we're out there. We still have $14.4 million in cap space. I don't think that's enough to get Devontae Adams to want to come here for a season. 
we'd have to drop the offer a lot. At this point though, why not? One year 13. Just see what happens. 23 points. I think instead it would be better to offer a one year deal to Kalecchio Semeli. At least try to upgrade at guard for a season. And an 88 point offer might actually work. What about like a one year deal to somebody like Terrell Edmonds? Maybe somebody that's a bit better against the run at safety would also make a difference. I just don't know that any of the free agents for the D line are all that great. So I'll just stick with who we have and then look to the draft perhaps. I might have to raise this because I would like to have Edmonds here. Let's go up to $5 million. 58 points, not enough. Okay, 67. I still have to make more signings later, so that $2 million in space might actually be kind of important. Next stage, and Kalechi Osemele has accepted the deal. Doesn't appear that Edmonds did. So that at least gives our offensive line a bit more talent. And that's a 9 overall difference from Sharping to Osemele. But receiver is a very big concern right now. I like that we were able to make a couple good free agent moves. Getting like Chad Briggs on the team and maybe he has a key role. Forgot about Quincy Etienne. I might have one more shot here in week uh, 4 of free agency. Or no, it's only scouting this week. The way this draft goes though is going to dictate what I do as far as the very first playbook edits go. Because if we don't like get super strong at receiver, I think you're looking at more of a two tight end offense. And I have no problem building that out, it's just very different from what I would normally do. Here is the free agency recap though, and Devontae Adams was never signed actually. We'll see what happens when we sim to the week one. But Will Fuller is now on the Green Bay Packers. Four years, $46.9 million. Baker Mayfield's going to the Jets. Carlton Davis to the Jaguars. Nobody signed Quincy Etienne. Only a few receivers were even signed. So I'll have to come back to him. We are on to the NFL Draft right now with the Detroit Lions on the clock, number one overall. Here are the top players in this class, some great edge rushers, cornerback is strong, Earl Shepard's probably going very early. I don't know that we're going to be looking to trade off. I think that our roster is still at a stage where it's like, alright, let's just add a few solid players here rather than go for a home run because you had JJ Watt and we traded JJ Watt so we could have a chance to build the team up and not just get stronger in one spot linebacker is a priority we can look at D line as well there are some really good players that I like in this class and then wide receiver offensive line those are the focuses now what I do think is important is to pay attention to like how many players on our board of the 61, how many have early first round talent? Who are the elite players? Christian Geddes is one of them, then Mario Harris, Stephen Baldwin at corners early first round, Earl Shepard's only a mid first round talent, Jose Samuels at cornerback, 6'3", 43840 early first round Keenan Rudd at defensive tackle who had an outstanding combine he's also a first round talent Jeremy Brown at wide receiver might be the highest rated receiver in this class Jabari Carr at defensive tackle another really good combine early first round talent Randy Wallace at center he's only projected late two so he's probably the best value out of any early first round talent. And that would be all of the early first round top players that are on my board. So a lot of great options, a lot of great position groups. Let's see how this draft unfolds now as Christian Geddes goes number one to the Lions, an edge rusher. 
And then Stephen Baldwin, corner to the Cardinals. Mario Harris going to Carolina. Miles Burst to Denver. Earl Shepard ends up going to the Falcons. So there is your Julio Jones replacement. Jose Samuels to the Colts. Trevor Meander in this deep cornerback class is off the board. Keenan Rudd. And then Chicago goes Jeremy Brown, the top rated wide receiver. Junior Bab. Cole Bradley. Shane Mooney to the Vikings. There's a 69 overall player. Will Coleman. Let's get past Tennessee, who go Nick Hoffman, the linebacker. The Rams go with Marshall Cross at right guard. George Williams. Justin Jenkins, the tight end. Shane McCann to the Bengals. And then Gerald Reese. That puts us on the clock here at number 20 overall. Plenty of good options on the board. We can take an early first round defensive lineman if we want to, and that's an area where the team isn't looking great at the moment. Position depth is always really important here, so there are still a lot of receivers on the board that we like. It seems like that's kind of a day two spot for us. Not so much here in the first round, which I don't know how that's going to go. For offensive line, we only have a handful of options, so that's where the value is. Randy Wallace, maybe at pick 28, makes some sense. For D-line, I mean, two options right here that are first-round talents. Carr, obviously, early first. And then at linebacker, that seemed to actually be kind of a deep position group. And there's still Lionel Watts in the first round talent, but there are still three second round talents. And some of them are early too. Cornerback still deep, but I just don't think it's going to be something we go after with our main picks. None of these trade downs are good. This logic has to be redone, obviously. So we got to make a pick here. What we're going to do with this first round pick, this first first round pick, is select Ohio State defensive tackle Jabari Carr. This is the best way for us, I think, to upgrade our defensive line. We didn't bring back P.J. Hall. We only have Kerry Borden and then Charles Omenahu and Ross Blacklock. We need another player that we can build around to fix this run defense and to start to put this defense back to being a strength. He is the pick, 77 overall normal development. So we get the number three player, but do not get hidden development. I know that apparently the developments are messed up in this game and it's hard to get star, but the upgrade from normal to star isn't out of the question. We just saw it happen to PJ Hall. So right off the bat, 92 strength, 76 block shed, and 77 power moves with 81 speed. He has a chance to be a very complete player. And with him and Kerry Borden, that D-line can be unbelievable. Just give it some time. So there is your replacement right now for J.J. Watts. And it's a very, very good player. We hopefully can get that development up. And now to 28 as the Saints take a quarterback. We're on the clock again. How do we not take back-to-back -back early first-round talents? We improve the trenches on both sides of the football. Randy Wallace is the pick. Now seven in true talent. Again, normal development, unfortunately. But your new starting center, who really doesn't have any weaknesses. Already 76 overall. And that's going to make him basically an average center without playing it down. There are a lot of things you could have done with those first two picks. What would you have done? Do you like the decisions I made there? Did not draft a receiver, didn't draft a linebacker. I instead go to the trenches on both sides of the ball. And now we got to start thinking about playmaker. We add Zach Ertz, and I think with where the roster is at the moment, that's a pretty big signing. Now we just watched a couple linebackers that I like go off the board. Hopefully we don't miss out entirely. 
Wide receiver John Sullivan was just taken. 74 overall. But I'm not sure we can find a starting caliber linebacker and receiver now, especially as all the linebackers are going. Lionel Watson off the board there. Not interested in trading up. We are on the clock again. Wow, we could still take a first round corner too. Isaiah Fletcher from Alabama. That would really help rebuild this team, even if corner isn't a need right now. Fletcher would arguably be the best player available. Still a first round receiver in Addison Rucker. I know I wanted to address linebacker and wide receiver. I think right now I just gotta go with the best player available and I just can't see how I can pass on Isaiah Fletcher. Man coverage, catching awareness at 4-3-3, six foot two, Bradley Roby, 30 years old. Isaiah Fletcher is the pick, 75 overall. Normal development again, 12th in true talent. So we have three top 12 players right now. And we still have some picks that can make a difference. But what's going to be available now in the third round? My draft board usually starts to disappear quickly once we get to this part of the draft. And there goes Kurt Reiner, who was the only linebacker really left that I thought was going to be a potential starter. There is still a linebacker I like. And we'll have to see what happens there. Closing in on our selection, Stacy Claiborne, 70. That hurts. We're on the clock. 23 players on the board right now. Linebacker hasn't been addressed. There are still a few I like. There's Joe Jackson from Arizona as the best of all of them. And then at wide receiver, we still have a first round talent here, Addison Rucker. Now he's late one talent, deep threat. Not a big bodied physical receiver like Sean Tompkins. But late third talent will put him significantly lower rated. And that would have him at or below most likely Chad Briggs who is already under contract and Isaiah Coulter. So if we want to see what these guys can do, that's probably better than drafting a receiver right now. And maybe we can get Quincy Etienne on the team once again. Hopefully he's available when free agency is up again. Briggs has 91 speed. I think that'd be really similar. The route running's gotta be similar as well. I kind of just want to stick with Briggs because I really want to develop the skill sets and I know his ratings. Instead, what I'd like to do here is trade out of this pick and instead have a third round pick for next year and a six, overtaking a first round talent at wide receiver. This can at least be used in a trade up next season. Give us some extra picks. We'll accept that offer. I'm not sure everybody's going to like that trade, but I really wanted to stick with Briggs and see if we can bring back ETN. I think that now we're not talking about elite prospects. We're talking about solid prospects that compare to talent we already have. So there he goes. 72 actually is higher. I thought it would be a little bit lower than 72. I'll check his ratings and see if I made a bad uh, move there. Dominique Anderson, of course. I think I was going to take him right here. We could use another running back, but he's going to back up Derrick Henry now. With this next selection, I would like to select Calvin Polson, a tight end from Oklahoma who had a very good 40-yard dash and has very good hands. Paulson is a 67 overall hidden dev player. We reached for the first time today and get our very first hidden dev player of the entire draft class. Wow. 
and he'll start right away as our third tight end. On the clock again, and here we're going to address linebacker. And we're going to select Joe Jackson, who has very good run-stopping skills. He also ran a 4-5-2. I'm hoping he has some coverage upside. At the very least, we don't have good linebacker depth, even if we just want a run-stopper. So no matter what, Joe Jackson has a role on the team. And he's a 68 overall. Good value here. 62 zone coverage, 62 awareness. So that's the starting point which is close to the coverage where Cunningham and McKinney already are. We don't have to work on his run stopping very much. We can put all the points we want into coverage, and he could be a focus player. I like this pick. We have two picks remaining, one in the fifth, one in the seventh. The board now has four players remaining. And I think that we could use another running back on the team now with David Johnson no longer on the team. So, Enrique Freeman or Ramon Diaz? Diaz is a power back. 448 40-yard dash at 230 pounds. Early six talent. And then there's Freeman from Charleston Southern. 451 40. Doesn't have the speed. He has decent juke though. Break tackle and carrying. We're going to go with Freeman. His true talent's a little bit better. His 40 times only a little bit slower. And usually elusive backs are better at catching the football than power backs. Freeman is a 66 overall. He has 63 receiving back and can sure enough catch the football pretty well. 72 with 68 short route running. 87 change of direction. Not bad. Where's ball carrier vision here? That is at 72. Now we're on to the seventh round, and I'm going to continue only making one trade for the future per draft. I've already done that, so we're going to spend this seventh round pick. And we're going to do so on a quarterback, because if this pick hits, we then have a backup quarterback on a cheap contract for four years. Quarterback Joe Kilgore is our last pick, 48 overall. I don't think he's the backup quarterback of the future, but I thought the ratings would be worse when I saw 48 overall. He will go likely to the practice squad. What did you think of the draft, everybody? I am pretty happy with it. Got unlucky when it comes to the developments, but we come away with two day one starters, Fletcher, may end up being a day one starter. I might just make a move at corner and let him play. We get a tight end who has hidden dev, Joe Jackson. We'll see what happens with Freeman and Kilgore, but overall, I really like the draft here. There are a lot of ways we could have gone. So many branching paths. It's like playing Detroit Become Human with this team. It all starts in the very beginning. There were so many possibilities for that first off season, and then this one. So I like the way we've gone though here was the top receiver earl shepherd i was really intrigued by him he ends up with normal development 93 speed just got to work on the route running a little bit but so much ability there there were a lot of great corners in this class stephen baldwin normal i guess i'm starting to see here normal dev is a bit too common i'm not sure why there aren't more hidden players this hasn't been a problem for as long as they've been doing the draft like this. There's only a few hidden dev players in the top 10. So because we focused on the trenches in the first round, we didn't focus on linebacker. So here's what we could have done. Drafting somebody like Lionel Watson, who has good run stopping skills right away. His coverage though, isn't very good and it's not going to be very good. Nate Burton, 71 overall, 90 speed with 67 zone coverage, but he went very early in the second round. There was also Jack Rainey, the very next pick who had hidden dev. And he already has 66 zone coverage, 84 speed, 79 strength. I really wanted to get Stacy Claiborne. Let's see where he ended up here. 70 overall, 91 speed, 
Good spec catch. It would have been fun to develop him for sure. But I also missed out on Sean Tompkins, who had Hidden Dev. Oh, man. Even with 87 speed, Hidden Dev, that would have been pretty fun. And then, of course, I decided that I didn't want to draft a receiver anymore and let Addison Rucker go to Seattle. And instead took the three next year so I could use it for a trade-up if I wanted to, plus a late-round pick. And 94 speed, 79 deep route running. We're looking at receiver not being as much of a strength this season. Rucker would have been a great Will Fuller replacement. But I decided that we would not make that move. Undrafted free agency is now underway. We could still sign some wide receivers. And I obviously wanted to bring back Quincy Etienne. Gotta scroll a bit here, but hopefully he's still available. And he is. I want to sign him to this one-year deal again. So, now we're down Randall Cobb and Will Fuller from last year's receiver group. Quincy Etienne, Chad Briggs. I could see us going to more of a two tight end offense, running the football, and then can Briggs and or ETN break out to become starting caliber. Do we also look to add another veteran? That's possible. If you want a slot receiver with a bit higher route running, ETN has better short medium route running right now, so he'd probably be the slot. We could also see what's available in free agency. There will be some better route runners here. Antonio Brown is available. Randall Cobb is available if you want to bring him back. And then Kendrick Bourne. He's usually a good option very early in franchise and has been, I feel like, for three years or so. He's just always available and has a solid all-around skill set. So I think here, after making all these moves, I'd like to see your feedback and then... Preseason next time, sign some players and get on to the regular season once again with the Houston Texans. Let me know what you think of this offseason and leave your feedback down below. Now that we've done the offseason, where to go from here? Are we okay going into the regular season with this as our offense? Or do we have to make a move at wide receiver? Let me know down below what you think. Please leave a like and subscribe to the channel and I'll have more of the Houston Texans franchise coming your way soon. Appreciate your support. Can't wait to see how this goes here in the next year of the series. Have a great day.